When you think back to when the first iPad came out, that was 15 years ago, it was promising so much about what it could do for artists, creators, and photographers. But back then, we didn't have the Apple Pencil. You actually had to do everything with your fingers. You're basically professional finger painters, but it has evolved so much since then. But even though we've got all of these cool new tools that we can use with the iPad and it has definitely got more powerful, it's still lacking in one specific way that makes it not quite as good as analog pen and paper. That is until this little device came along. This is the Torbox Elite Plus and it's the top of the line when it comes to their shortcut devices. It has buttons, wheels, dials, haptic feedback and so much more. But today I'm going to tell you the real reason why you just can't stop thinking about buying one. To put it simply, for anyone doing anything creative, the iPad combined with an Apple Pencil is probably one of the most powerful combinations ever. But there's still one massive drawback. Everyday actions that should only take one step tend to take two or more, leaving you with that feeling that maybe it's better to just go back to your desktop or worse, go back to analog completely. That's where the Torbox Elite Plus comes in. After almost five years of other models with the Neo, Elite and Lite editions, the Elite Plus is the first Torbox to be compatible with iPad. When I need to handle photos in Lightroom, animate a stream alert or do some illustration, Torbox makes everything easier. I'm Nihongo Gamer, an artist dabbling in comics and photography. This is Focus Lines. Let's show you why the Torbox Elite Plus is the missing link that every iPad creative should be checking out. Just want to point out that this product was sent to me for the purposes of making this video, but I don't have to say anything specific about it. I don't have to send it back at the end, and all opinions are my own from actually using this device. First, let's talk about what this device does. Every button, wheel, and dial on the Elite Plus can be set to functions that normally you'd have to tap the screen or use a computer keyboard to access. Now, if you're new to digital art on the iPad, you may be thinking, well, I can just use the touchscreen gestures to zoom in and out and rotate and that sort of thing. But to do those gestures, you have to release your grip on your Apple Pencil, and as a result, it's always like changing your grip to do actions and gestures and then putting your hand back on the Apple Pencil. You could also use your non-drawing hand, but then ergonomically, it just feels strange to have both hands on the device. But where the Torbox really comes into its own is being able to access functions that are normally buried in menus or just need a keyboard shortcut. Shortcut. So as a photographer, one of the first things I do after a shoot is copy all my pictures into Lightroom so I can pick the best ones to edit and publish. Now in real life, you just pick your photos up and put them in a separate pile. But in Lightroom on iPad, this would require long pressing on a photo, clicking add to album, choosing the album, and then finally clicking the add button. With hundreds of photos to get through after a shoot, you can see why this would become a bit of a waste of time. Well, imagine my relief when I discovered that the Torbox on iPad can help me bypass a lot of this. Combined with the speed of Lightroom on iPad and the flat jog dial set to skip rapidly through my images, I simply tap the D-pad to flag, unflag, or reject photos depending on whether I want to edit them later. I can blitz through this process at breakneck speed all while having one hand free for coffee. Now this raises the question, why don't I just use the built-in gestures so I can flag and unflag my photos in Lightroom? Let me show you. Unfortunately, this feature can only be accessed in flagging mode, which you have to access by pressing this star icon. From there, you have to aim and tap on this tiny flag icon at the bottom of the screen, or swipe up and down on the right side of the photo. Seems fine, right? Well, in addition to hovering over the screen, causing undue tension in my hand, swiping up and down itself can be a hassle. Swiping left and right is a different motion. You have to watch the iPad animate every photo sliding past and stopping before you can perform any gestures. And even if you skip this animation by tapping on the film strip below, the size of the thumbnails keeps changing. So tapping on the same place sometimes advances to the next photo and other times just skips one altogether. Remember also that in flagging mode, Lightroom automatically closes the editing panel, which you may be using to check for changes already applied to exposure, color, and other properties. Now when sitting down with a friend or a client and you're trying to go through the photos and choose the ones you like, also just reaching over to press the back button to go back to the gallery means you have to like reach over the other person and tap the button. They might also think it's just like their photo gallery app on their phone where they can like swipe down on a photo to go back to the gallery, but no, you have to reach over to the top left of the screen to press that button. On my tour box, I have the side switch set to G, which just brings me back to the gallery instantly. After I've picked my photos for editing, I just set the filter to only show my flagged images and then I begin editing. This is easy enough to do using the on-screen menus, but there's one more feature using the tour box which makes this process so much easier, and it's the before-after preview. 
Normally you'd have to long press on the screen and wait about a second before the iPad switches to the unedited version, and that may not seem like a long time, but when the edits are really subtle, you sometimes want to flick back and forth between versions more quickly. That one second delay quickly ruins this feature completely, but with the Torbox key set to the before after preview shortcut, I can flick back and forth with no delay whatsoever. Game changer. And if there are details I want to check by zooming in and out, I still don't have to reach over to the screen because the Torbox also has gesture simulation. So for simple zooms into the middle of the photo, I can just roll the center dial. Once I've edited my image and I want to copy and paste my settings to other photos, again, it's just a case of pressing my copy paste shortcuts, which I've set to the 2C button. You have to confirm which settings you want to copy, but pasting the settings is just one click. If there's anything I dread as a photographer, it's knowing that after I've taken hundreds or thousands of images, I'm gonna have to go home and sift through hundreds or thousands of images. Sometimes I actually end up taking fewer photos so that I can avoid sifting through all of them. But even more so than a keyboard, now that I've got the tour box, it's just so much easier to sift through the photos really quickly because there's so much less delay going through the animations but swiping past you on the screen. But it's also just more fun. When you've got knobs, rolly dials, and dials that spin around, and you can actually click all of them in with haptic feedback so you know exactly how fast you're turning them because they click every single time. It's so responsive and in a way, I actually kind of look forward to the process and I don't mind taking more photos now because I know it's gonna be so much easier to just choose the ones that I want afterwards. But going through photos in Lightroom is only the beginning. Where the Elite Plus really comes into its own is when you're doing something more in depth, like editing or in my case, drawing. Now I've actually covered most of the general Torbox features in my review on my other channel for the Torbox Neo and my drawing demo for the original Torbox Elite. So if you'd like even more in-depth use cases, you can check those videos out later. But for now, let me summarize how it actually improves my art process. What often gets in my way of just picking up the iPad and using it more often is knowing that one, it might actually just be easier if I just did it at my desktop where I have everything set up and all my shortcut keys on my keyboard. And two, even if I did bring a keyboard around with my iPad, it's just not ideal. It gets in the way, I don't know where to put it, it's too long, and then it just kind of sucks the fun out of being mobile. It's the subtle design features of the Torbox Elite, like the clicky buttons and the haptic feedback that really make it so much fun that you keep picking your iPad up again and again. Now let's be fair, drawing with a keyboard in itself is not an issue. That's why professionals have continued to use keyboards at their desktop setups for decades. But the iPad is special. It invites you to bring it places sat on the couch, in a chair at a cafe, on a train, you name it. But once you get that keyboard out, you remember why you left the house in the first place. Where do you put the keyboard? In front of the iPad with your drawing hand outstretched, under the iPad while drawing on a stand, to the side of the iPad pushed out to the left because keyboards are generally longer than necessary. Even if you do find a somewhat portable keyboard, they often feel nowhere near as nice as the mechanical keyboard you have at home and with no real feedback, you often end up looking down at it to make sure that your hands are in the right place anyway. The Torbox Elite Plus has kind of handled these issues for me in a few important ways. At less than half the length of a regular keyboard, you can place it right next to the iPad in a more ergonomic position. It may look strange, but the buttons and dials are positioned carefully so that you can roll the dials, and hold down modifiers like shift or control all at the same time which multiplies the number of functions that each button can perform. This means that most buttons and dials have three or more different functions and that's not even counting the ability to set different shortcuts if you double click them. The other thing about the shape is that you naturally rest your hand vertically which is how I use my vertical mouse on a desktop. As far as I'm aware, this is a more natural resting position for your hands and it prevents you from locking your wrists to the table or needing to bring a wrist rest with you. The way the buttons are laid out also encourages you to hold the device loosely instead of locking your hands into the unnatural control Z pose. And since every button or cluster of buttons has a unique shape, you never have to look down to know what you're pressing. I even tried balancing it on my leg and although it's not ideal, it does work. If you've only seen it online, you won't realize this, but the Torbox is actually designed with what seems like a weighted plate on the inside. Four rubber feet keep it firmly in place to prevent it from sliding around too. Most keyboards for iPad are wireless, but until the Torbox Elite, these devices had to be plugged into the PC with a cable. The Elite Plus brings along with it wireless connectivity to the iPad with dual channel Bluetooth so you don't have to pair and unpair every time you switch devices. That being said, I still had to tap the sync button to help it find the new device after switching. Now there are literally hundreds if not more shortcuts in an app like Procreate or Clip Studio Paint when it comes to drawing. But what I really want to point out is that 
The toolbox doesn't make it easy to access shortcuts that are just kind of nice to have. Shortcuts are the reason why digital art software is even usable at all. Like if you didn't have shortcuts, digital art would just be a massive pain. But because we have shortcuts, that's how digital art makes itself almost as easy to use as art tools, like analog tools. So shortcuts are not just features that are kind of nice to have. The toolbox kind of opens your eyes to how crucial they are. Like if you don't have them, digital art just kind of sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, but it's just uh, makes it kind of like, I don't want to do it. When drawing analog, you can lean in to see more details. On an iPad, you have to use your hands to do a zoom gesture. Simply rotating a piece of paper, try the rotate gesture that only kicks in after a set angle. Want to erase fine details and then large areas? Try double tapping the Apple Pencil to switch to the eraser tool. Opening a menu, dragging a slider, erasing, then opening the menu again, dragging the slider a second time to find a bigger size, and so on. I could go on, but I think you get the picture. What the toolbox does that even a good keyboard usually can't do is provide the perfect set of buttons, multiple different rotary dials for different use cases, and modifier keys to triple or quadruple the number of functions available, so that interacting with a digital app can almost be as fun and intuitive as doing things analog. Now I've probably made it sound like the Toolbox Elite Plus has massively improved my life, and of course in many ways it has, but there are still some things where when I'm using it I'm like, this should have been changed, or this really needs to get better, or like, why is it like this? Let's go through some of the issues. First up, the iPad thinks that the Toolbox is a keyboard because it is able to access keyboard shortcuts, but obviously it's not a keyboard and so because there are no letters on it, you can't type anything. So when you tap on something like changing the name of a layer, it's like the on-screen keyboard doesn't come up automatically anymore. Sometimes it wants to show you the keyboard and sometimes it doesn't, and that's just kind of frustrating. I would love if they had a teeny tiny cheap keyboard like about the size of your palm that would just slide out of the base of the Toolbox Elite. Next up is the dual channel Bluetooth feature although it's nice to be able to pair to like a Windows PC and also be hooked up to my iPad somewhere else, I do still have to press that sync button and that's on the base of the device, which brings me on to my next con, which is like, why is the power button on the base of the device? Put the sync button and the power button on the top or the side of the device. It won't look ugly. It, it'll be fine, just put it there. The next issue is not really a problem with the device, but it's the fact that it doesn't come with a carrying case. I feel like for the most expensive device they make, it would look better for them if they had like a little bag included. Speaking of the price, that brings me onto the massive elephant in the room. A USB number pad would cost you $10, maybe 10 or $15 at most. Obviously it has none of the amazing features of the tour box, but it does make it a little bit easier to draw on an iPad and you do have a kind of keyboard with you. So on the one hand, 10 or $15 for a keyboard number pad, and on the other hand, $297 for the Toolbox Elite Plus. Now in between you have the other models, you've got the Toolbox Elite, which is $268, you've got the Toolbox Neo, which goes for $169, which is quite a good deal, but then you lose wireless because the non-elite versions don't work wireless, and also none of these work on the iPad. For people who are using it professionally, a $300 device is not bad if it's something they're gonna use eight hours a day, every day, five days a week. So for a lot of people professionally, it's no big deal. But the thing is, a lot of people, especially people drawing on iPad, are hobbyists. And it, would, it just really would be so much nicer if there was also a budget option. If they removed some of the features, a bit like they did for the Toolbox Lite edition, which is $95, if they made a version which was $30 extra so that it had that Bluetooth functionality, so $130, $125, $130 or so, that would be perfect because then you're like, okay, you're losing some of the premium features of the Elite model, but I feel like the iPad is the perfect place people who are hobbyists, artists, and photographers who want that convenience of being able to like spin the jog dial to go through their photos quickly or to just change the brush size. All right, change of scenery, I had to check out of that hotel, but you're probably wondering, should you pick up the Torbox Elite Plus? The Torbox has been a great product series since it began in 2020. It's just a little bit frustrating that it wasn't iPad compatible from the very beginning. I don't know what the technical issues were, but they had a wired device for the first few years and it wasn't until the Elite that it finally got wireless and it's only here now in like 2024, 2025 that we've got a version that's compatible with the iPad and as a result it means that only the top of the line model is compatible with iOS and I really wish that there was a more budget model available for iPad. My advice to you is that 
if you do have the money and you th think that this would be useful, then I highly recommend it because on an iPad, it's like perfectly matched with this device being mobile, but being able to carry this around and have all of that flexibility of your professional desktop type setup with all the speed of your shortcuts. It is amazing. But if you're a hobbyist and you're just getting into art and you're looking for a left-hand device because you like the idea of maybe speeding things up a bit or leveling up a little bit, then you might just want to consider like holding off to see if they make a more budget version of this for iPad. I think it's just a little bit too expensive for a large majority of people, but if you're a professional or if you plan to be leveling up significantly and you can invest $300 in this, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're interested to see more art related drawing things and or photography and POV shoots as I go around Japan traveling around, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my other channel, Nihongo Gamer as well, if you're interested in gaming related things like controllers. That's all from me today. I've been Nihongo Gamer. I'll see you real, real soon.